Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the latest prototype for my electric eel wheel and we'll be going over some of the nice improvements we've been working on. This is actually the fourth prototype, fourth major prototype and actually countless minor prototypes, but um, each one of the major prototypes have gone out to multiple beta testers and they've given me great feedback and we keep iterating. I've actually spent a lot more time iterating on this version than I have in the past and I think it's really starting to pay off. We're getting close. I'm going to send out a few of these uh, to the beta testers and see if it addresses all of their uh, concerns from the previous beta versions. But uh, sort of before I seen, send these out, I wanted to show you guys uh, what I've been working on. So uh, it's got the same brushless motor inside of it that uh, the previous version had. So right there, and the wiring's not finalized yet. I'm going to make that a lot cleaner, but. Uh, the motor's rated for 30,000 hours. Uh, it's going to include a bottom case like this that can hold a battery pack. Uh, it's got this magnetic orifice hook. So this is the orifice hook and it's held in place with magnets. There's actually another new magnet that I added, um, but I'll show you that in a little bit when I'm showing you how to switch the bobbin. Uh, these, these hook system is, it's sort of hard to use, a little bit hard to use on this um, 3D printed version, but once I injection mold it, I'm confident that this uh, hook system is going to be my best hook system yet. There's a orifice reducer here that you can pop out and get a really big orifice and the hooks will accommodate much bulkier yarn. There's actually been a lot of testing with bulky yarn on this version. Um, for multiple ver reasons. Um, first, it's good to make sure it, it spins bulky yarn and also fills up the bobbin faster so you can sort of test with full bobbins, which has actually turned out to be a, a thing that uh, was important to test. Uh, it did change some things and I've added uh, some things in order to sort of accommodate that. One of the things we found with bulky, really full bobbins was that um, having a spring tension system like this. So in the past, I've always used elect or elastic, but uh, on this version, I'm going to have a, a spring here. And there's actually another spring inside of this knob uh, that just gives you a nice feel to the dial. So uh, this gives it uh, a really nice tension system. I'm, I'm confident that's the best tension system I've ever done on an electric eel wheel. And what else have we got? So the spindle is still going to be the stainless steel and it's really machined to make it easy to put on the bobbin and really minimize vibration. Another thing I've added since the previous version is uh, this. I, I'm calling this, I haven't really finalized the name, but this is, um, it, it has two purposes. It uh, cinches in um, all of the bobbin and stuff. So there's really no possibility for um, it to vibrate and it also allows when the uh, system gets um, really full with yarn sometimes this when you stop the wheel suddenly the bobbin will keep spinning and that causes some problems so it, it allows you to prevent that kind of a problem uh, so you won't have to have this on um, in fact I spin most of the time without it but if you um, want it'll be coming with it and now let me show you some of the things it can do over on the counter where I can spin it up. So it will come with um, this foot switch. Uh, and that's used to start and stop it. And the other way to start and stop it is to with this dial. And there's actually a third way, so I put in three ways. So if you turn this, this is the uh, ZS direction switch. If you just switch it over there, and then you switch it back, that's just a way of stopping it. But if you now, once it's in the uh, opposite spin direction, if you either turn this dial to zero speed and then back, now it's spinning in the opposite direction. And the same is true with that. And so... Now it's the opposite direction. So I put that in there in case people want to travel without the pedal, but uh, most people, you don't turn the switch except when you're going to ply. So it's most of the time I think this switch is not gonna be used because the foot switch, which comes with it, will be used instead. 
I realized I forgot to show a speed test of these, um, this version, so definitely meant to do that. So I quick adding this in at the end. So this is the wheel spinning at about 1800 RPMs. That's looking like the, and that's speed at the flyer. That's looking like the final speed that I'll be using uh, on this version. And as you can tell, it's very quiet. So sorry I forgot to add that in when I was shooting the rest of the video. There's a lot of little changes around the plastic. Oh, I did move the orifice hook to the other side. That makes it a lot easier to grab like that because I cut out a piece of plastic. It was getting kind of busy over on this side with the switch and, and the orifice hook. Uh, I can show you taking off the bobbin. So in order to take off the bobbin, you um, don't really need to loosen um, the tension, but it helps. You can just stretch out the spring a little, but I find it's a little easier. I've also added some hooks to this front portion. So you can actually just hook the band there and that'll hold it and now it won't slip off the um, the uh, motor pulley which makes changing the bobbin a little bit easier then you pop off the whole flyer mechanism with the bobbin on you take off this release and there's actually a magnet I've added to the back here and that just holds uh, the bearing in place when you're changing the bobbin so that you don't lose that piece. You take this off and then you put your new bobbin on and you know that as I said before this piece is optional this bobbin release dial so um, and you put this back on and you're good to go. If people have any questions uh, about this new version definitely let me know if or feedback. I'm always open to suggestions and I'm still changing this version, although we're getting close to finalizing it so I can have the molds made, which I want to do before I have uh, the Kickstarter for this version, which um, is actually probably slipping a little bit since uh, last time. I think last time I said it might be in the March time frame, and I'm guessing maybe now it's more likely to be in April, but I haven't really finalized the date. Uh, I just want to make sure I get all of the uh, plastic uh, features really cemented in and really confident of that portion before I have the molds made because it's very hard and expensive to change the plastic molds. So I'm taking a little extra time at this stage and uh, hopefully I'll uh, have those molds made and then be able to do the Kickstarter. I am going to have the molds made before doing the Kickstarter because that was... Um, the most uh, difficult to estimate uh, portion um, of the Nano. And it was the reason the Nano was so close. I, I kind of wanted to ship everything a little bit before the final date of the last Kickstarter. And as people know, I was actually, um, you know, right on time, basically, and it kind of stressed me out. I want to I want to have a little more buffer this time. And I think uh, the way I can have a more predictable schedule is to have the molds made and that'll also give people a much better representation of what the final one will look like when I do the uh, Kickstarter videos. So hopefully in the April time frame we'll have a Kickstarter for this one and then shipping later uh, in 2020. So later this year. Thanks uh, for watching.